Hello everyone, it's me, Matsmus. Thanks for being here today. You're probably wondering, Matsmus, I clicked on a video to see the MI-26. Why on earth am I looking at a CH-53 King Stallion? Well, that's because a lot of people have some misconceptions about what's the world's largest or most powerful helicopter. Some believe it is this helicopter, the American CH-53, which is an absolutely beautiful aircraft, which I have done a video on. But unfortunately, it is not. There is other misconceptions that the Chinook is also one of the most powerful and largest helicopters in the world. Although both of these helicopters are rather large and extremely powerful and also absolutely amazing by the way, um, they are not the largest and most powerful helicopters in the world. The actual real largest helicopter in the world was the MI6. Looking at this absolute behemoth right now, it just baffles my mind that it could even take off the floor. Uh, the size of these things are just astonishing. Of course, Russian design, and uh, today we are going to focus back onto the MI26, which is actually currently right now the biggest and most powerful helicopter in the world. The MI6 unfortunately never followed through into history because it was just way too big for the practical use for the Russian military today. There's a few still around, I'm sure, that could be utilized, but for the most part, the MI26 is here to stay. Um, in Afghanistan, I actually saw these things flying around, delivering supplies and all that good stuff in Kandahar. They were absolutely amazing to watch. The sound of these things and the amount of air that's been chopped up by those rotors it's incredible, and uh, today we're going to discuss the overview of this aircraft and uh, discuss a little bit more about its history. So, let's start off with the history of this beautiful aircraft. In the mid-1960s, Russia was developing a super heavy lift helicopter to be capable of deploying ballistic missiles to remote sites of the countryside and to deploy units where most other helicopters could not. It was also capable of being able to provide a lot of support during the Chernobyl incident, which it did very much so. Prior to the MI6 and the MI26 platforms, there was a lot of design considerations going into an aircraft that I could only really explain as a helicopter that's like a V-22 Osprey that's being used in the US military today, but the rotors are larger and are fixed in the horizontal plane. This helicopter, the V-12, was supposedly capable of lifting close to 100,000 pounds, that's right, it could lift a CH-53K at maximum gross weight. Two prototypes were built, but it never really entered production, although we all really wish it did. The design of the MI-26 started shortly thereafter, as the only other lift helicopter in the Russian fleet was the aging MI-6, which is an absolute beast compared to the MI-26, but in practical sense it wasn't working out for the Russian military, and the MI-6 was really starting to become very inefficient at doing its job. The MI-26 had very similar operational requirements though. It was there to deploy small ballistic missiles around Russia in case of emergencies, and also to pull out troops, vehicles and such if there's an area where they cannot get rail flats or trucks to. It was very efficient in pulling the battle groups away from danger areas, and could only carry a few vehicles but you get enough of these things, which of course being that they're Russian they have hundreds of them, they could pretty much reduce an entire battalion on the ground to nothing left behind and pulling back or forward to different locations. The aircraft's empty weight was not to exceed half of its maximum gross weight, and it also had to be capable of carrying armoured personnel carriers and amphibious assault vehicles. To meet this requirement, the MI-26 was designed with eight blade rotors, the first of its kind, and a specially designed lightweight gearbox that split torque loading of the two gigantic engines. Lightweight aluminum or aluminium lithium alloys were used throughout the helicopter to reduce its empty weight. The MI-26 ended up with an empty weight of around 62,040 pounds, and a max takeoff weight of 123,200 pounds. The two turboshaft engines, the Lotarev D136s, have a rating of around 11,400 shaft horsepower each. The main rotor diameter is a massive 105 feet. To put this into perspective folks, the common Bell 206 helicopter has a rotor diameter of just over 33 feet and is powered by a measly 650 shaft horsepower engine. This thing is a beast. The tail rotor of the MI-26 is larger than the main rotor of any common smaller helicopter. The MI-26 made its public debut in the 1981 Paris Air Show and finally entered service in 1985. Notably, the MI-26 was heavily involved in the Chernobyl incident cleanup, and it then had to do a lot of flights over the area, dumping a lot of chemicals to try and control the amount of radioactive dust that was leaving the area. To the extensive use of the pilots in that area, they of course were somewhat affected by that radioactive risk at the time. 
The modern Mi-26, known as the Halo A, has no real offensive weapons, but it does have a variety of defensive countermeasures, mostly infrared decoying for heat-seeking missiles. It can carry two armoured military vehicles or 90 light combat troops. The standard crew is a four-crew system, a pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer and navigator. An additional folding seat in the cockpit will also hold a flight technician if required. Loading is through a clamshell door in the aft of the cabin, and a loading ramp that can be raised or lowered hydraulically to facilitate loading. There are two electric winches on the overhead cabin compartment to position payloads, and these winches are on sliding rails to be repositioned throughout the cabin, basically making the lives of the load masses on this thing a lot easier, because when you're handling massive amounts of weight and the tonnage that you're pulling on this thing, you're going to want those cranes and the winches doing most of the work. The Mi-26T is a civil freight version of this helicopter, introduced in the same year as the military version. There's really no difference between the civilian and military versions really except from their roles. It was announced a little while ago however that this variant has been upgraded and now is on the production line as the Mi-26T2. An extensive glass cockpit and instrument modernization eliminates the flight engineer and navigator stations while allowing the helicopter to operate day and night, rain or shine. Engines have also been upgraded, which was astonishing for me to find out, because when you have that much power, do you really need more? But of course, being that this is a heavy lifter, they want to increase even more capacity. So they upgraded them to the D1362 turbo shafts, with full electronic controls delivering a whopping 12,500 shaft horsepower. And in emergency situations and improved operating characteristics in hot environments, these engines were even better than before. Reports have said that the payload may have even been increased from £44,000 to £55,000. The Halo was also well suited for a medical role. The Mi-26MS was the medical variant used from the Mi-26T. Now just visualise fitting all of this into a helicopter in terms of medical care. An ICU for four patients, an operating room for one patient, a pre-op station for two patients, an ambulatory section with five stretchers, three seated patients, 10 medics and a medical laboratory. This could basically take an entire hospital on the move in a helicopter, and this helicopter could be fitted with various configurations for up to 60 stretcher patients. It's basically a flying hospital. Many of the other Mi-26 variants include a firefighting version, an aerial crane and a fuel tanker. Of course, in Russia, being that there is a lot of forestry areas, having an aircraft that can do firefighting like this is key. Dropping off a huge amount of water from just delivering from rivers or lakes, this helicopter would be a massive game changer when it comes to helping to put out huge forest fires. I know in Canada we would love to have 20 of these things, you know, flying back and forth with these huge water pails putting out forest fires because we've had huge problems with them. But I'm sure Russia would have the same problem with some of their forestry areas. I don't know if the, you know, maximum payload is affected with water that's floating around all underneath the aircraft and kind of offsetting its balance, but it's pretty cool seeing these things deliver this water to even this tiny little fire in this field, which I think is purely there just for demonstration purposes. The gargantuan capabilities of the Halo have made it pretty popular around the world for those needing heavy lifting, including lifting its own Russian fighter jets, helicopters, and, well, let's just go through a few examples of what this thing has really lifted. So as you can see, this thing has lifted a lot of different things. One of the most interesting things it's ever lifted though is a woolly mammoth. A Halo helicopter once lifted a 50,000 pound block of ice containing a 23,000 year old woolly mammoth out of the Siberian tundra in October 1999. The weight exceeded the design limits of the Mi-26, so this helicopter had to be promptly inspected for the airframe warping after the mission itself. 
As you can see by the previous footage, a civilian MI-26 was leased by the US military to lift a couple of damaged CH-47 Chinooks at various times in Afghanistan. Of course, the design of the MI-26 was really for military purposes and applications, however they are absolutely perfectly suited for humanitarian and disaster relief. For instance, the MI-26 was a perfect fit for disaster recovery following the massive 2008 earthquakes in China. The helicopters transported earth movers or heavy duty equipment to remote areas inaccessible to any other kind of machinery. These earth movers were then used to clear landslides holding water that threatened lives of millions of people downstream. I would definitely say that this helicopter's capabilities really haven't been topped for quite some time. I could be wrong, but China and Russia really just entered into an agreement to develop a helicopter with twice the lifting capability of the MI-26, putting it near the original V-12 design capacities. I'm very interested in following these developments though to see exactly what they're going to design. When you're talking about doubling the lift capacity of an aircraft of the size of the MI-26, I'm astonished that it's even a concept, but uh, here we go, I guess we're going to make it. Still, the MI-26 is extremely relevant in today's military climate. It's proven year by year that it's going to do very, very well for quite some time, and over 300 MI-26 have been built and put into service with very different militaries around the world using them, not to mention the huge civilian operators that are using it in construction roles, amongst many other things that it can do. I am very impressed with this aircraft. I would love to fly in one. I can just imagine stepping inside that cargo bay, seeing how big it is, and the sound of those rotors, just astonishing. When I saw them in Afghanistan, I, I can't explain to you how much sort of thump you get from those rotors as they come in to land. They're just absolutely massive things. But that's it for today, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please leave me a like and a comment. And if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, please hit the little bell button by the subscribe button. If you want to follow my Patreon page, please go check out the description box below. And anyone who has been donating or supporting towards that page, I can't thank you enough. It really does mean a lot. If you want to buy any Matsumus merchandise, if you're interested, that is, go also check out the description box in this video and you will see the link to my store. Thank you all again for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.